This is our 2012 Mini Cooper S, and this car is an absolute blast to drive. But in today's video, we're gonna show you several of our favorite mods to make this car even more fun while maintaining its reliability. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. This is our 2012 Mini Cooper S. It has a turbocharged power N18 engine, and this car is a ton of fun to drive. Is it the quickest car? No. Are you going to win tons of drag races? No. But on a backcountry road, this thing is fun to whip around. As you can see, the car is very tiny, it's very light, and with the turbocharged power engine, it's just so much fun to drive. The other thing I really love about it is it features hydraulic steering, so you get that really tight BMW old school steering, unlike some of the new BMWs that are out. So ton of fun to drive. But if you know us, you know that we can't leave cars alone. So today, what we want to do is we want to show you some of our favorite mods to enhance your driving experience that won't impact reliability. In today's video, we're installing a short shifter to get that better connection with the transmission. We have a strut brace to further tighten up the front end of the car. We have exhaust, which is going to make this thing just sound a million times better, but it's not going to be obnoxious and it's going to be 100% neighbor friendly. We'll be installing an air intake to let the car breathe easier, a blow off valve, well, because it sounds really cool, and we even have Union Jack lights as a bonus. So with that, let's get started. All right, diverter, where are you? I think it's down there. So let's pull this intake pipe off. off. Look at that. There it is. In all of its glory. Look at that. What am I going to do with all this extra room? That's what I did is I took out this bolt here. So that way I can kind of pull up on here. And it gave me the room I needed. Look at that. Boom. Two more. All right, last one here. All right, let's see what I need to do to get this out of here. A little diverter valve. Boom, there it is. So with this, if you can see right there, they use from the factory like a rubber plunger where it just, it fails over time. It doesn't hold boost. So we're gonna replace it with this one from TurboSmart. I'd say it's a little bit of an upgrade. And then, so this actually has a metal piston inside instead of this little weird rubber boot that gives out. And then as you're driving, when you let off, it lifts up and it lets the air vent to atmosphere. So you get a cool blow off sound. I'm gonna try to connect this first. My gut says it'll be weird. I don't do that. All right, um, we may have got the wrong version. With this, it has extra little tabs. So we just need to alter the plug ever so slightly. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this off. Okay, with our little alterations, let's see if, oh, perfect. That looks good. Make sure that you put your O-ring back in here. Um, otherwise, it's not gonna work out all that good. Just make sure you get it. Make sure it sits nice and flat. Navigating this in again, you gotta make sure that your seal is sitting nice and flat. So fun fact of useless knowledge. About 20 minutes ago, we made a video on three popular maintenance DIYs. We put this filter in. Never even started the car with it. <laughs> we were already upgrading it, so. All right, so before we move on with some of the other mods, I gotta start it. I gotta hear how it sounds. That sounds so cool. Dude, 
it again. People be like, what's under the hood of that thing? It's literally the same valve I have on my 600 horsepower 335. But it sounds better on this car. <laughs> How do we get this sprayed on top of the engine? That's probably one of the coolest things that is going to happen to this car. All right, now that our intake and diverter valve are all set up, it's time to put this unreal looking strut brace on here to tighten up our steering even more. is I'm going to try to measure and just so I stay as accurate as possible I'm going to measure from this middle line from third gear put it over here so we're at like five and a quarter inches and then when I shift down we're at like nine and a quarter so we go from five and a quarter to nine and a quarter. So what this is supposed to do with this upgraded shifter is it's supposed to shorten that by 30% and then lower my shift knob by two full inches. So very curious to see if it's going to be able to do that. Put that to the side now. like that, boom. Okay. So we'll come over here. All right, so we have these all greased up and they will literally pop on with ease once you get them lined up. So now it's like five and a half. To eight and a quarter so that, that's a decent amount I mean what well, look, look how much shorter it is do a little side-by-side -side next to our new AFE exhaust. So one of the things that you're going to notice right away, the tips look amazing compared to the stock ones. They also stick out a little bit further, which is pretty cool. Um, more aggressive muffler design, and you'll notice it's a, it's a larger pipe, and it also cuts out this other resonator. So it should make it sound a lot better and also louder. Right, so we have done all of the other mods. The last thing we need to do for your bonus here is add Union Jack tail lights. So basically, we have the black line and we also have the red ones. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Basically, it's the UK flag and it looks awesome. Even though BMW owns Mini, so it's technically a German company, used to be a UK company, so you gotta represent. But check this out. This is gonna look so good. So I'll put the, yeah, just for showing you guys what it looks like, we'll put the black ones on one side and maybe the red ones on the other. I like the red, exactly it's the black, so we're gonna have to see which style we end up keeping. But what you need to do with this is you need to go in here and you take off this bezel. And basically there's a, a series of little clips on the outside. Now the thing is, the older these cars are, the more fragile they are as well. There we go. 
pop it off without breaking a single tab. Then you're gonna take that T20 from earlier. So now that that is disassembled, we've got to reach back in here. There's a plug that needs to come out. There you go. Then, All right, the trick for this is there's a little tab at the bottom and there's a little tab at the top. You push that in and then push this in and then it releases the whole thing. And then you have a gaping hole. So let's replace it with our new Union Jack lights. Plug them in, get them situated. That looks so cool. All right, so as you may have noticed, there is an extra wire on the back. That is for the reverse light. Now, technically, you don't need it on this car because the reverse light is down there. But there is an included wire. And what we're gonna do is, we don't have instructions. We are the instructions. So we're trying to figure out how to tap into the reverse light. So I'm just gonna start poking around and see if we can figure out where to tap. And then, just as an extra bonus, our reverse light should light up, which would be really cool and then we'll show you what everything looks like and then we'll show you a comparison of the red and also the black line. All right, so I'm just gonna stand off to the side as Zach jumps in the car, we're gonna show you all the features. So we were able to tap the reverse lights into these lights down there. So they should work. We didn't test this side yet, but we tested that side and it was fine. Um, over here we have the red, which I like. And then over here we have the black, which is Zach's favorite. So why don't you start it up, Zach? All right, so right now the lights are off and Zach has his foot on the brake. Take your foot off the brake. And this is what it looks like. And then hit the brake again. All right, and then do your, your uh, left turn signal. So you can see it has a sequential. And then do your right turn signal. Same thing over there. Um, why don't you turn the lights all the way on and turn the blinker off? There you go. That's what's up. Actually, they look pretty much the same. All right, now throw it in reverse. Perfect. Check that out. Oh, looks like we had a reverse light out there anyway. So that was actually really good we did this. Oh wait, no, there it is. It was just taking a nap. Um, yeah, I almost want to just disable these because that looks so good. Yeah, Z, here, come out and switch with me. Just take it out of gear. All right, now Zach and I are gonna switch so he can get a look. Honestly, I think it looks the same. Like besides the day, like all the lighting and everything looks identical. Here, ready, watch. So here's, I'll just do reverse. So that looks good. Yeah. That lights up. Um, here's no lights. And that's what it looks like when you brake. And then this is lights on and the whole light should get brighter when I hit the brake, right? Yeah. All right, cool. But see, they look very similar after seeing everything lit up. The cool thing is they look pretty much exactly the same at night you can't tell which one is black line, which one is red. So after seeing all the lights on, Zach and I both agree that we like the red, but we do have the black line and the red line available if you're interested in the set for your car. Boom. This car is so fun. So like something that's really fun about this car, and we have a couple of cars that are, that are pretty quick. This one is definitely the slowest by far, but this one is so much fun to drive because it's manual, and now it's got a short shifter, you get that, Real good connection, it's not all loosey-goosey, it's very tight. You have hydraulic steering, plus a strut brace to really tighten up the, the steering and the whole feel of this car. You can hear the exhaust, but it's not overbearing. You can still hear it with the top up. We just wanted to hear it more. The intake, it's almost got like a little whistle to it. And then you can hear the blow off. Such good mods for these cars. Yeah, so one, one thing that I really love about a car like this is like when, when we take like the M3 to the track, 
it's got a lot of power and I feel like a lot of times you can't utilize every ounce of power out of that car where when you take a car like this to the track you can literally have your foot to the floor and you can maximize every ounce of power that the car has because it doesn't have as much but it's I don't know you just have to you just have to experience it so anyway, once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach in the passenger seat filming. Thanks so much for watching Keys Motorsports. If you liked today's video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com. We have parts for this car. If you are interested in anything that we talked about today, whether it's parts or tools or what have you, we're gonna have everything linked down below for you. We're gonna keep driving because this thing's a lot of fun. Now, if you didn't see it, before this video, we also released a top three popular DIYs for maintenance in this car. So. If you have one of these and you're looking to maintain it, be sure to see the link in the description because we have a link to that video as well. But anyway, once again, I'm Zach. Wait, no, I'm Brian, that's Zach. Thanks for watching, see you next time.